Okay, you're gonna try to do a comparison. Hi, well, first off, it's me, Eric, Eraser Mice, here on my Learn Max channel, talking about my Rolling Robots project. I'm gonna talk about two different types of spheres, uh, sphere skeletons you can put together. First one, you're probably familiar with a little bit, uh, the Carrie Christie Sphere, uh, the Sphere Builders Group, um, uh, offshoot of the BB-8 Builders Group. And uh, this design is created by, there are, basically repeating segments. You have one of these that you print basically uh, 24 times and uh, you use four of these to you, 24 times. Then there are these cross ribs that you get six pairs of these that go across the circles. And these are my lightweight versions that I built. So these uh, form the cross piece here and these are all the seg segments here. Normally you print them and then you assemble them into rings like this. And in between the rings, I'm gonna separate this out. If I pull these apart, there is a, uh, you can either use a aluminum washer or a penny. Uh, aluminum washer is a little bit lighter, so I like those. Um, and they basically form a nice spline in between, so it's a much tighter joint. Now, normally you put these together in uh, circles like that, but you also have the option, I've discovered, if you want, there are also splines in here and you can let me do this. Try this real quickly because time is of the essence, right? Um, you can actually, and this works better with a screwdriver. <laughs> when you have more time on your hands, um, you can put this together in triangles. Uh, something I just discovered. Let me do this real quick and hopefully it won't fall apart in my hands. So I'm using a uh, 440 inch and a quarter stainless steel um, screws here. And they also, they go together with uh, 440 nylon uh, lock nuts. And this is the same, more or less the same hardware throughout, at least with regards to attaching the uh, segments together and also attaching, when it comes to attaching these across there, that uses that same 440 hardware. So anyway, let's see if I can do this real quick, like I said, um, using the same aluminum washers. So I don't have too many of them left, so I have to keep reusing them, okay? So you'd have, wind up putting, all right, I'll just put two there. They go together like that, and that's gonna form a triangle. And the nice thing about assembling it a triangle at a time is you don't have to actually use any glue because you can then, this, this triangle will attach to the next triangle with hardware. So that's a different way to put the carry sphere together. And you also sort of test fit it all together. Uh, some people find that in order to get the, uh, the pennies or the washers to sit really, really flush in there, you might have to file them out a little bit or you might wanna heat set them using a soldering iron. So, uh, really cool design. This is uh, the, the, one of the latest uh, versions of it, which have some, some channels in it for uh, wires and whatnot. Um, now, I've been experimenting a lot with trying to do this really, really lightweight um, because I've discovered with my drive, and it looks like with other drive systems as well, the weight of the overall body, which is the skeleton and the panels, has a big impact on uh, BB-8. So, okay, so there's that. Let me put that aside for a second now. And let's talk about another draw, uh, another sphere. Now, this next one is a bit of a newer undertaking for me. This is the uh, tiny TNM uh, sphere, which is also from the BB-8 Builders Club. Okay. Now, let's look a little bit. I've got a partially assembled piece here. Um, now you'll notice this also has a sort of basic piece to it, which is one of these sort of uh, third of a triangle, and then they bolt together to form the bigger triangles, and they then bolt together to form uh, the sphere uh, parts and so on. Now to attach the cross ribs, which you have in this as well, this kind of cross brace that holds the back of the panels, there's an additional little piece that you have to have here and that prints separately. Uh, these can be a little bit of a challenge. Um, they're actually uh, recommended to print them straight up and down like that. I found I kind of redesigned a little bit, threw them into 123D and got it to print uh, flat on the bed. Uh, just give me a bit of a stronger print, I, I feel, in terms of the orientation of the print lines. Um, it's a little bit more intense putting it together because there's a lot more hardware involved. And because of all these joints, it tends to kind of 
slip on this until you do get all the hardware and then it kind of starts to come together. Um, it doesn't look like there's any glue recommended on this one, but to get extra strength, I'm thinking perhaps some glue might be in order. Um, the hardware is very, very precise. Uh, it uses a variety of hardware as opposed to just like one uh, standard thing. Uh, and Tiny was really good about getting like exactly the right length of nuts and things and exactly, excuse me, the length of uh, screws and things. Uh, that becomes, you know, becomes important if you follow exactly his, uh, you have to sort of heat sink or, or heat, yeah, heat sink or uh, countersink the, some of the screws in there to get them to fit just right or you can get some longer ones and they stick out a little bit. So, um, there you go. So there's the 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 uh, T and M sphere, and again, here is the carry sphere. Um, they're both really great. Uh, I'm more familiar with this one. Um, the differences. So uh, I'm printing them super light at this point. So the, the variation you're going to see might be more, might be less, um, but I'm seeing a difference of about 300 grams, uh, which isn't an awful lot, but uh, it's it's not to be you know not to be dismissed. So the the TNM sphere is a little bit lighter. Um, it's also a bit thinner. This is eight millimeters uh, versus the eleven millimeters. So that we'll see how much of an impact that really has on the magnetic mount. This really has to do with how well the head stays on. We'll see. Um, I think this one, the carry one, certainly because it's a little bit thicker, uh, it, it is, it, to me, it seems more rigid. Um, I don't have all of the cross pieces on here, but on the sections where I, I can definitely see in between, I think it would benefit from some glue perhaps, uh, but uh, it, it does have a little bit more give to it, and that's, you know, because it is a thinner, a thinner uh, piece here. Um, you know, maybe if I printed it at 100% infill, it would probably be more rigid. Well, certainly would be. Uh, but then I'd get into the, you know, the weight being, you know, more and so on. Um, so which do I prefer? I'm more, like I said, I'm more familiar with this one. I've kind of been designing some parts and things around it. Um, I like the mounting system on here a little bit more because it's beefier. Uh, the the, the drivetrain uh, mounts, in my case, it mounts straight through the actual sphere, so I think that's going to be a bit more rigid, as opposed to really having to go with an adapter plate, uh, which I would on here. You'll see um, one of the segments on here, or I should say six of the segments on here have an additional hole, and there's like a circular plate that mounts on the inside, and there's six, three, 632 hardware for that, um, which is a, certainly a little bit more lightweight than the M5 hardware that's, that's recommended on here. So, uh, which do I recommend? I don't know, if we were starting from scratch, uh, if I was doing my own you know, drive all over again, I don't know, it's, it's, it's a tough call. I think, you know, like I said, this one until it's, you know, until I've had a chance to play around with it and maybe my newer lighter weight drivetrain or maybe some, there's some specific things um, that I you know, would, would do that would really make me feel a little bit more comfortable with the, the lighter weight in here, um, as opposed to a little bit extra beefiness of this one. Uh, it's it's a tough call. Uh, this one's a little trickier to put together. There's a lot you know more hardware involved in it. This one was uh, trickier to print um, because there is more support involved in that. You can't you know in terms of uh, these these are nice easy sections to print. They stand right up on the bed. This you do have to have some uh, some support materials on there, and it requires a little bit of cleaning up afterwards. Uh, wow, you know these little these little parts kind of. Wish they didn't uh, weren't such a pain in the butt, but it's not you know. I mean, it comes together. It's pretty straightforward. There's you know lots of little fine detail work, little little nuts and all that kind of stuff in there. Um, you know, this is more you know went together easier because it's less hardware and and uh, you know less kind of inset things and, and countersinking things. Uh, I like the spline. I mean, I would, I would love to combine things about them. I mean, if there were like splines in between these segments, like they're on carry sphere, that would be great. Um, if this had, you know, maybe used a little bit more of like the ribbing on here, that would be cool. Uh, if carries was thinner, that'd be cool. So, uh, it's a, it's a toss up. I'm going to finish my drivetrain out on this one first. Um, cause I've got, I guess, more time invested on it. And then we'll see where this takes us, uh, be doing things with, with it in mind. I'm also looking forward to the new panels that are going to go on these. Let me take just a, a real quick, uh, sidetrack on the panels. So... Um, I had been using PETG and kind of going the club panel route. Uh, I print my panels full size. Some of you are probably more familiar with printing your panels uh, in thirds, like that. These wind up being pretty heavy panels. Uh, in terms of my, my new lightweight approach, 
I have started printing very, very lightweight panels with very few shells on the outside. It's lightweight PLA. Um, I have something like two shells, 10% infill, kind of uh, a little bit scary. It's certainly not as strong as a 100% infill one, but it is just like half the weight. These things weigh about 114 grams versus like 280. So much, much, much lighter. And by the time these are backed up by the, by the, the skeletons, I don't think it's gonna be a problem, especially I'm thinking of uh, coating these with like an epoxy coating rather than the typical filling, uh, you know, sand and fill kind of stuff. So that will also strengthen maybe both the, uh, I might coat the skeleton as well with that epoxy and then uh, use that as the finishing product on here as well. Now also another big um, thing, the circles, right? So traditional circles are at least two parts with an orange ring and a white center. Uh, if you have a smaller printer, you're gonna probably print that in multiple segments and kind of glue them together. So a lot of finishing sand and get it all together. I'm now working on these ultralight panels. Um, it feels like a paper plate practically. I print this in one piece on my printer. It requires a 12 by 12 print bed. Um, also very, very light. Uh, I print these with a finer resolution than the other panels so that they don't take as much time, but they still at least take about 24 hours and they are wicked light. I'm gonna do that same sort of thing, epoxy. I know I'm gonna to have to do a little more coating and sanding on the outside and especially taking care of that because it is uh, a very thin layer on the outside. It's much more a composite kind of airframe, uh, very RC airplane sort of approach with a you know very lightweight and then lots of uh, airy infill on the inside. But again, it's it must be things that are pressing down. And because I don't have as many seams, I think I'm going to be actually kind of better off with a lot of the rolling on the outside of it. Um, so we'll see how it goes. That's the latest uh, on my lightweight panels and my two frames that I'm working on. So until next time, this is Eric, AKA Eraser Mice, here on my LearnMax Rolling Robots Project. Take care.